Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Where do we start today on the Kevin Jackson Show? Holy cow. We had the JFK files released. Everybody was, oh, what's going to happen with that? Nothing. The only thing the JFK files would prove is that our government was involved in the assassination of a president. Big whoop these days, right? The government has been involved in the assassination of citizens. The government has been involved. Look at the number of people that Hillary Clinton has been accused of, of, of killing. The number of people Barack Obama has droned. And I could go on. Look. Do we have any surprises at all with respect to what this government is capable of? What level of corruption it's willing to go to to silence people to keep effectively keep itself growing? I've called it Java the Hut because it is a big, enormous tick that is going to keep sucking. And the problem is the tick is now bigger than the organism from which it's sucking and it can't survive. So where do you start? Where do you start a day like today after we've had two weeks, three weeks, four weeks of revelations, four weeks of, st- quite frankly, a year of things? We've had more things to discuss in the news cycle than you'd normally get in, in an entire cycle of politics. I'm talking about eight years of presidency. And g- go back to the things that we couldn't talk about during a Barack Obama the era of Obama, the era of zero, when we were talking about things like Fast and Furious and running guns in Mexico, Benghazi. Oh, it, it, what difference does it make? We now know that the IRS did target conservatives and they've issued an apology. Well, big deal. They've issued an apology. Barack Obama let, let Lois Lerner go scot-free and then nobody got prosecuted. What about the veterans? The VA, people killing themselves, uh, you know, getting killed on wait list, dying on wait list. And the 22 vet, uh, veterans a day who commit suicide. Is that the number? It's quite a few. What about all these scandals? The cover ups. Now we start getting into the real cover ups, right? We've got Uranium One. Knowing that the Clinton Foundation did exactly what we said they were doing. We told the left that their crooked Hillary Clinton conspired to make herself rich after she was afraid of being, here's the quote, dead broke. Hillary Clinton and her husband said, we will never be dead broke again. And they colluded with the Russians to make that happen. Barack Obama knew about it. He's probably got money coming to him, funneling to him in some kind of way. You better know the tentacles of this deal stretched throughout D.C. We have the most crooked government on the planet, and they try to run around like they're, you know, holier than thou. Look at that corruption that's going on in Argentina. Don't point at any other government. We have the most crooked government, and thankfully, we have somebody who is willing to expose it. You know what's funny to me? I think, I look at Donald Trump, and he probably, he got in there and said, you know what? This is far more crooked than I believe. We can't even let the let the citizens know how bad it was or they may never trust government again. He's having to slowly dole things out. You know, think of it. They, they, they wanted to know. They said, why doesn't the Justice Department release all these different things? Trump's probably like, wow. We, we'd have to shut down government if I released all this. I mean, I don't know. He just released these additional emails for the State Department on Hillary Clinton. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The point is, it is a po- It is poisonous. It's toxic in D.C. So where do you start? Fusion GPS. Who paid who? Uh, who really did the dossier and all this? We have answers on all these things, and we'll answer them today. It's just a, it's shameful how this government ha- has treated us over the decades. Have, if you if you really think about it, think about what's happening here, folks. This has been a grab of power. And it started out, it was incrementalism, slow grabs, new taxes, new regulations. And suddenly in the time of Obama, they went wild. They said, we don't need to pay attention to the citizens. 
If we want to push health care down their throats, we can do it. If we want, if people die on our watch, they can say nothing. If we want to run guns into Mexico because we have an agenda to bring over illegals, they got to take it. And they just shove stuff down our throats. The problem is it wasn't nutritious. <laughs> what they were shoving down our throats did not strengthen our body politic. In fact, it weakened it. And now we find ourselves needing to drain the swamp. And let me tell you, when they drain the swamp, there won't be a whole lot of people left standing. There are a lot of folks here who are complicit in all of this. Bureaucrats who, like Harvey Weinstein's people, said, I don't see anything. Mm -mm." I want you to think about everything that's starting to become exposed about the left. And I I want you to feel good about who you are and why you were such a steadfast soldier for conservatism, because, you know, if you allow that to happen, this great country falls. I, I keep telling you guys, pat yourselves on the back. For two reasons. One, you took it. You said, you know what? It'll straighten itself out. You took it. We didn't revolt. We didn't do Antifa tactics and threaten to beat people up and all that. We said, we'll beat you up at the ballot box. We've always taken the high road in that respect. Be proud of yourselves. Now, I often tell people, I'm willing to waddle in the mud with you. I got a guy right now. He's on Twitter with me. Black dude. Won't reveal who he is. And he, you know, calls me all kinds of names. And I'm like, look, if you want, uh, you know, my schedule's public. <laughs> you know, we can have this. We can have this discussion in person. I'm willing to go and fight for this country in whatever form that means. But I'm glad we took the high road. I want the leftists to know we're willing to get down in the mud with them. But we stayed there and we will continue to. And the second part of it is you now put somebody in place that's willing to do that, fight that battle with you. You finally said, we've had enough. Now we've lined it up. And for the record, you didn't just line it up with Trump. You lined it up with a lot of other folks. Republicans throughout this country are now looking at politics differently. Trust me, the the establishment Republicans are now saying in order for the Republicans to be successful long term, they cannot let Donald Trump fail. They now have to back him. Now, the good news is they're going to back the winner. See, they've been backing losers for a long time. That's how we got here. You don't get here with just Democrats crushing you. Republicans have been too. Anyway, short break. We'll be back. Lots to discuss. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. 
For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. Glad you guys are here. KJRadio.com is where you can find out more about us. I want to talk about Donald Trump coming out, talking about the opioid, cri- opioid crisis in America. And Trevor Noah, this little, <laughs> he's a putz. He comes out and says, well, what's he going to do? What's he going to be able to do about it? He's just one man. Well, good for Trevor Noah to notice that Donald Donald Trump is just one man, one accomplished man. And it's funny to me that Donald Trump makes the opioid crisis front and center. And for the record, we got a ton to talk about today. So I'm going to move quickly because I want to get into this other stuff that's been brewing now for a couple of weeks getting bigger and bigger announcements being made today from Mueller about who's going to be indicted. It's going to be subterfuge. I'm going to indict somebody from Trump. Good for you. Uh, Cause that's what I predict, but whatever he ends up doing, I will tell you this, it's not going to be anywhere close to who should be indicted. But I want to go back to this because Trevor Noah says, what's Donald Trump going to do? What did Barack Obama do in the opioid crisis? We'll get into that. I'll answer some of these questions for you, but here's what I want you to remember. When we start thinking about these men and what they are capable of doing, because one, we know his track record now in terms of the presidency. The other is just beginning. We've got less than a year it's coming up on a year of Donald Trump's presidency. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't dare. If you're a leftist, I dare you to go compare Donald Trump's first year to Barack Obama's first year. I dare you. Because if you come out of that and you still are an Obama supporter, you're a bigger moron than I called you before. While Barack Obama uh, smoked dope and snorted coke, Donald Trump was building a multinational, multi-billion dollar enterprise. Those are the facts. Obama turned his ability to manufacture crooked voter signatures into a career. The man practically bragged about his chum days. That's smoking dope. And his cocaine use was one of the only negatives of Barack Obama's life that he actually owned up to. And you know why he did it? Because saying that he smoked dope and snorted coke gave him street cred. That made him, get this, more black. That's what he was thinking. So between his dope use and marrying Michelle, and of course, working in the community, community organizing, helping people get, get, get out the boat. Well, that's what Barack Obama was noted for. He saw drug use as a badge of honor. As for Donald Trump, he turned a million dollar loan into a multi-billion dollar fortune. He needed no reprieve from reality in order to function in society. By that, I mean, he doesn't smoke dope. He doesn't even smoke cigarettes, a vice that Barack Obama couldn't even beat in in any point in his life. When he became president, they said, it doesn't look good for you to smoke, Mr. President. I'll do my best. And then he went around the corners and smoked. He has little or no relationship with his family. This is I'm talking about Barack Obama. Donald Trump dotes on his family. All his kids around him, kids involved in his business, etc. What do you hear about Malia and Sasha and and uh you know I me? Mean, what what other family is there for Barack Obama? His brother doesn't talk, talk to him. His so-called brother. He's got a sister that has no relationship with. What is it? This guy can't even embrace himself with family, much less love of country. Unbelievable. As I've said many times in life, folks. You learn more sometimes by what people do wrong than what they do right. You learn more watching people do the wrong thing. I I tell the story, my grandfather would shake hands and he had a real loose handshake. And I couldn't stand that. And I would shake your hand and, you know, real firm, like I'm I'm equal to you. And men would say, boy, this kid's got a firm handshake. Because I made sure you knew you're not going to forget shaking my hand. 
Anyway, I digress. Washington Times. In rallying against the nation, or now the nation against drug addiction, President Trump spoke in unusually personal terms about the death of his older brother from alcoholism and about the lesson it holds for him from the value of abstinence. To an audience at the White House, Mr. Trump recalled, recalled his older brother as a great guy, best looking guy, President recalled, best personality, much better than mine. But he had a problem. He had a problem with alcohol. He would tell me, don't drink. Now, see, I love this story. Let me tell you why. It's Donald Trump telling you that despite my brother having it all, he had the same father. He had the same upbringing as I did. He he had it. Good looking guy, articulate, blah, blah, clean. (laughs) And my brother could not beat the disease of alcoholism and he couldn't beat he couldn't overcome with all the things with all of his white privilege alcoholism got to him and it killed him said his brother was an airline pilot a father of two he urged him don't drink and don't smoke his brother told him these are my vices that could hurt you and donald jr listen i mean a uh, donald trump uh, it's not a junior uh he listened He listened to his older brother, Fred. And what I want the world to understand is Fred shows that wealth offers no guarantees. That the rich suffer many, many of the same things that we do. But I love this story because it it was one of the first times that the president got, you know, more personal with us. 64,000 Americans died from overdoses last year, 175 a day, seven each hour. He says this epidemic is a national health emergency. Nobody's seen anything like it. Yeah, he's wrong there. Barack Obama's seen something like it. The president went on to say, we can be the generation that ends the opioid epidemic. We can do it. And the good news is he means it. With all the scandals that are hurting the left, the president pulls a master stroke of focusing on a bipartisan issue. Now, I mentioned his detractors. I mentioned Noah, Trevor Noah, the little putz from Australia. That What's he going to do? They're talking about there's no funding. in in the Now that he's declared it a national emergency, he can go get special funding. But they're going, but the funding's broke. So what? When has that ever stopped Donald Trump? The lack of money. If he's declared it a crisis, he's going to do something about it. And what's funny is the left knows this. Unbelievable. He says this is a priority. Now, what's funny is when when Barack Obama talked about this, he started a thing called uh, Operation Unite. And uh, he got leaders from the National Drug Abuse Centers and Heroin Sum. They did a summit in Atlanta. And they, they then they set aside $1.1 billion in funding to help for treatment. But they didn't talk about root problems or anything like that. And for the record, it's leftists that created this problem. They're the ones who made drugs easier to get and stuff. Now, I'm not saying he didn't do things by changing the way drug addicts would go from hospital to hospital to get drugs, and they they now register them and things like this. But Barack Obama did not make this a priority, and he only started doing something about this in June of 2016 in earnest. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. I was talking earlier about the opioid crisis, and I have a couple of quick questions. Why was the opioid crisis not part of Obama's health care overhaul? If he took it seriously, why didn't he do something about it then? It's been a, it was in a crisis the entire time he was there. Opioid uh, usage leads to heroin usage eventually. All this free love of, by the way, of narcotics has gotten a generation of kids hooked on opioids who then become heroin addicts. And let me tell you something. Metaphorically, you couldn't have a better scenario that represents government. Government gets you hooked on something that it tells you you're okay to get. And then it gets you on an illegal something and put chart you down a death spiral. 
that where you end up a zombie. That's exactly what the left has done. You couldn't a- ask for a better metaphor and nor could you ask for a better scenario where a guy like Donald Trump says, we're going to address this. We're going to put an end to this and stop this spiral and get people back to where what what happens when you no longer are drug addicted and, and you're out of your mind. You want to know what happens? You start live, thinking about yourself. You start gaining self-esteem. You, you get your, your, your regular person back. You're no longer a product of a chemical. And then you go and repair relationships. And as you repair those relationships, you do what? You strengthen your family and your friendships. And that's what makes you a productive member of society. <laughs> this is all related back to the core of who we are. Nobody grows up and says, I want to get addicted on, on painkillers and do blankety blank. They don't do that. The pharmaceutical industry knows these, these products are too addictive. The si- Look, I'm not blaming them. They, they're trying to come out with good products. But the Food and Drug Administration is allowing these guys to create products that create a, a hunger for the product. And that hunger for the product leads to these devastating effects. And Barack Obama, after passing the most extensive health care thing in the nation, doesn't address it. And then later in his in his uh, tenure, he decides, well, let's start doing something about it. Good for you. It should have been a priority. Family, the, the, the pursuit of happiness, how people live is a priority in this nation. If you're the commander in chief, it wasn't for him. Anyway, I digress. I want to talk about uh, all these other, believe me, folks, I, I, I looked back on Hillary Clinton and, you know, during the campaign and said, you know, what, what could they be thinking when all these investigations were going on with their emails? And they had some bad weeks, as you guys recall. This is undoubtedly, undoubtedly the worst time for the Democrats in the in modern history in modern history it could not be any worse these people are struggling and let me tell you something i if you expect a an iota what what did barack obama say there's not a a smidgen <laughs> if you expect a smidgen of sympathy from me for these clowns it is not coming and what's funny is it's not just the democrats who were who were complicit in this in fact all of the opposition research, we know where it started. Judge Jeanine hosted a Hannity show the other day, and here's what uh, she had to say about it. This week, major developments in several Democrat scandals, including the controversial Uranium One deal. And tonight, breaking news about the anti-Trump dossier. Myron York, who joins us in just a minute, is reporting that the conservative website, the Washington Free Beacon, funded the original Fusion GPS research into Donald Trump. According to York, Fusion GPS was also looking into other Republican presidential candidates. Welcome back. So the key thing here, folks, this is the Kevin Jackson show. That's not the key thing, by the way. The uh, the key to this, and I believe Byron York went on to talk about this subject with Judge Jeanine, but the, here's, the, here's the key. It was a conservative group, and I, t- I keep telling you guys, the guy, the 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 people like um, Newsweek, I mean Newsmax, Washington Examiner, they're not conservative. They're not. They're establishment Republican, which is effectively rhino, which for all intents and purposes is Democrat light. These are people that do not have our best interests in mind. They are there to craft the rhino message. And when I talk about the rhino message, don't rule yourselves out conservatives many times you guys will come up to me well I, 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 i'll give you an example i talked to a guy last night who's running for senate he called me up you know kevin i'm not the establishment candidate and you know people are going to be going against me and i'd really like to get your support now i want to earn it and i want to start by talking about the black community and i believe that donald trump has gotten it wrong in the black community and i was like and i listened to him for a couple minutes and then finally i said you're completely off base 
I said, man, first of all, if you think you're going to get my support with that position, you are out of your mind. Well, Kevin, you got to understand about black. And I will admit, I don't know anything about blacks and I've never been black. And he goes, and I'm like, I've never been white. And I know about the white condition because see, you're already off base. It's the human condition and you're already separating it into colors. Now you got a problem. And then you want to tell me that Trump is fueling this, you know, the, the issues, the divide. I'm like, that's absolute nonsense. Media is fueling the divide. And you just told me you don't know jack about politics and you want me to help you. So I spent about seven minutes explaining things to him. And he's like, well, you're right. I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, but do you get it? Do you really get it? Or are you just kind of going, well, uh, I get it for now. I get it because I want your endorsement. It really, the conversation made me mad is what it did. And so now you've got the, those are the types that they, they, he, he says, well, Kevin, I don't know anything about black people. Really? So what, you don't know anything about being a human? Well, what exactly do you think is the, the difference between you and me? You think that there's a kid in the world that didn't grow up like me that's got different skin color? It's ridiculous. And that's what makes me mad about these idiots is they can't understand that the the true conservative nature of people is to think of people as human beings, human beings in certain circumstances. Can I be living a type of lifestyle that is credited to blacks from a cultural standpoint? Yes, but there are white people doing that. There are white dudes that are technically, and I'll use my finger quotes, more black to in, in terms of culture culturalization you know living in the hood rapping and all that Eminem's more black than I am in that respect but he ain't more black than me in my DNA that's for sure so it bugs me when these guys talk like this because it's just silly oh my goodness so we've got the the opposition coming from Republicans these were people who targeted Donald Trump. Look, do we need to rehash it? They didn't like him. He's not establishment. So they went out to get him. And the Washington Free Beacon issued a thing that says, look, we may have looked for opposition research, but we in no way had anything to do with this Russian dossier. Okay, fine, Washington Free Beacon. If that's going to help, I'm sorry, it's the Washington Examiner. It's the Washington Examiner, not the Free Beacon. So, The Washington Examiner says, we had nothing to do with the Russian dossier. Okay, fine. But you had something to do with trying to upend Donald Trump. Now, all is forgiven in the sense that it was during, because for the record, they did opposition Republican research on other candidates too. But that was the beginning. That was the nexus of everything that we're talking about at this point. And then we get into what happened. Right? So I want to talk about what's going on now, how, because the left know they are in huge trouble, not big trouble, huge trouble. And the, the level, the number of people that are going to be caught up in this web is amazing. So what are they doing? They're starting to downplay. You're starting to downplay it. And, and I want to focus on some of the things that they're going to use to sort of say, well, this is no big deal. No, that didn't fit here and there. But uh, Jonathan Turley talked about why this is a big deal. Do we have time for this clip? No, then let's do the Sarah, Sarah Sanders on it, okay? I think all along that the accusations were uh, a huge hoax, as he, we like to refer to it here at the White House, one of the greatest political witch hunts of all time. I think this further proves uh, if there was anyone that was colluding with the Russians to influence the election, look no further than the Clintons, look no further than the DNC. This is hypocrisy at its highest level. And I think it may be a new low in American politics. Everything that the Clinton campaign and the DNC were falsely accused Using this president of doing over the past year, they were actually doing themselves. It turns out, and I think that this is a, a major scandal for the Democrats. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So Sarah Sanders, spokesperson, uh, White House spokesperson, uh, is obviously right about this. Heads are going to roll. We're going to spend a lot of time today talking about this. And I got it. As I said, I have. <laughs> 
There's not been so much media involving this where the left is even beginning to go, uh uh-oh. I'm talking about New York Times, Washington Post, etc. Short break. We'll be back. Keep it here, folks. Kevin Jackson Show. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Hey, leftists, see what happens when you don't have a dope-smoking, cocaine-snorting president at the helm? Somebody who's a teetotaler, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't, never did coke, never did drugs, kept his head down, focused on what he was supposed to be doing and made himself into a billionaire, then decides, I can now give back to the nation. Suddenly, you're able to drain the swamp. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com, 844-551-8255 if you want to contact us. Drain the swamp. Scandal after scandal. We, where do we start? For more than a year, the fake news industrial complex and the Democrats and Hillary and Podesta and Ben Rhodes have been slinging filth against the president and against his team. None of it has stuck. But in the last week, we have had an explosion of scandals that all are true and that all go back to the DNC and to Hillary. And the trouble is, Sean, you have to do a massive service because you're the only people. It's you. It's Sarah, it's Solomon, it's Peter. But that's it. And there's so many scandals, we have to separate them. Number one, there's the Uranium One deal. That's treasonous, okay? We have to deal with that. Second, there's the dodgy dossier, which is about Russian disinformation being used to slander Donald Trump. And then, thirdly, there's James Comey using that disinformation to create a special prosecutor trigger that is used used to investigate the president. And then lastly, the fourth story is Fusion GPS. How many stories are out there that are fake, that came from Moscow, and which were peddled by Fusion GPS into the left-wing media? So the, That's four scandals in one week, Sean. The, the, the Russians lied to impact the election. The yes. Russians infiltrated our national security and to corner the uranium market and they succeeded and they knew all the crimes that were committed. If, if this had happened in the 1950s, there would be people up on treason charges right now. The Rosenbergs, okay? This is equivalent to what the Rosenbergs did and those people got the chair. Think about it. Giving away nuclear capability to our enemies, that's what we're talking about. All right, everybody. Welcome back. That was Sebastian Gorka formerly uh, one of the uh, advisors to the president, I believe, in foreign policy. This is a guy that knows what he's talking about. And look, you, whether you want to take it to the level of the, the, the Rosenbergs or whomever, it doesn't matter to me. But I can tell you this, this is a scandal of the highest order. And we've been warning the left, you've got the most crooked people on the planet representing you. I want to focus on that a little bit. See, what I'd love to do to get is I'd love for a leftist who listens to this program, probably don't, doesn't like me, mad at me. I'd love to get your take on what you think is going on right now, because, see, here's the difference between me and, and, and that particular person. And I, and I would venture to say my audience and this person is that 
we don't have a dog in the fight. The only thing that I care about is how great this nation is and how what it provides to everybody. See, th- that's where we separate ourselves from them. My agenda isn't my side needs to win at all cost. <laughs> my side is a side of you f- understanding that whatever life you want to build for yourself, you have that opportunity. And so as, as uh, my grandmother used to say, everybody for himself and God for us all. So if you want to be a rock star, go be it. You want to be a baseball player. You want to be a judge. I don't care. You want to be a, a janitor. I don't really care. What I care is that you have the opportunity. I'm not trying to make everybody into conservatives or whatever. Your life can be the life you want to live. If you want to tattoo your body from head to toe, put body on or make yourself look like a body armor, make yourself look like a devil, which a lot of people do for some reason, or in do- you want to eat glass or, or swallow swords or spit fire at the circus. I don't care. All I care about is that you're happy doing it and you're allowed to pursue it. And hopefully you can make a living at it. You know, I'm, we don't have, there's no, I don't, it's not like I want a world of lawyers and bankers and, you know, square pegs. I don't want that. I want you to be what you want to be. And I think most of of conservatives want that. And and we don't, we don't even talk about, we can't sell that message, man, to save our lives. So you've got this group of people that have, that want you to be who you want to be. Then you have the left that say, no, you will conform. You will uh, appreciate my gayness in terms of legislation. I don't, I don't have, look, if you come in, to interview for a job as a salesperson selling information technology services or management consulting and you've got devil horns you know little things that they where they stick out of your head you're tattooed up you you look like a uh the sith revenge of the sith or you know like a halloween mask and you've got big loopy earrings and all that i can tell you without even interviewing you 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 can't take this job now, you could say, Kevin, you're discriminating. I'm not discriminating against you. I'm telling you what has to be representative of this particular job. Now, if you want to work at a trading card company, you know, or in my uh, my art shop or my record store, you know, maybe that can maybe you could. So you pick your path, but it isn't me discriminating. But somebody said, no, Kevin, you must hire the devil worshiping looking guy, you know, because, you know, it's a discriminatory. No, it isn't. <laughs> He discriminated against himself by doing something out of the out of the norm. You can't make me you can't legislate me into saying, yeah, he's going to make a great sales guy because he's not. And there's nothing to there's nothing more for me to tell you. I don't dislike him. It, would I have chosen that path? No. And that's the point of leftism. If you don't readily accept that path then well, you're a bigot or whatever. If I'm, if I'm a bigot, then he's as big a bigot because he didn't choose my path. Oh, but your path is the majority path. And I wonder why. I wonder why so many people choose to live in on the up and up. They go, I'm not going to tattoo my entire face and my neck and my body and wear a bunch of body armor. Things poking through my lips and my nose and my ears and bunch of, and think that I'm going to go get a regular job. If you're going to go that route, you better be a pretty good rock musician or artist or something else. Because it's not going to happen otherwise. And this is why... The, the, these things bug me. Anyway, I want to go back to what Gorka says. So Gorka's talking about these scandals. And as I tell you guys, with all of these things, the, the under layers of this stuff is what's most impressive. The idea that this isn't about Uranium One getting a deal. This is about how that was allowed to occur. How under the Obama administration, they let Hillary Clinton work with her crooked foundation funnel $145 million into the foundation, take a product of the United States, give it to our supposed arch enemy to do that, then cover all of that up through Fusion GPS, who says, well, we're not going to release the data of how the deal was done, and yada, 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 and and, and all who's complicit. And and then they all deny it. Everybody goes, no, we, I didn't do it. I don't know about you. Not me. So De- they asked Debbie Wiseman Schultz, who was the DNC chair at the time, Did you do this? You know, did you pay for the fake dossier that led to chasing Donald Trump on Russian conspiracy charges when, in fact, all the conspiracy charges were pointed at the Democrats? And Debbie Wasserman showed, "Uh, I I don't have any knowledge of that. 
I don't have any knowledge of that. I don't have any knowledge of that. Okay, so you have no knowledge of all of this, Debbie, but we do know that the DNC funded it. So who wrote the check? They won't even, even when they're caught, these rats are cornered. They don't, you, you, they, they fight back. They pull out the guns and the swords and they, I am mighty mouse. I will fight you. And so she knows she's guilty. And not only that, Debbie's got a whole other set of, of issues that are coming up with these Awan brothers and IT selling secrets, allowing these Middle Eastern Muslim Brotherhood guys to run her IT system, the IT system for government. Multiple Democrats are involved in this. That's another scandal that's out there brewing. Gorka is not even close on all the things that are out there, folks. We've got Democrats giving uranium to the Russians, giving aid and comfort to the Muslim Brotherhood, and they want to put you on a snipe hunt around Donald Trump. And, and so, well, he he t- talked about building a building there one time. Really? Oh my gosh! Well, let's let's throw him under the jail. Let me tell you what's happening. The left are beginning to turn on Hillary Clinton. It's it's subtle. You're starting to see it. They can no longer keep the tempest in the teapot. And when this breaks, this will break the back of the Democrats. I'm not making, the, as I said, James Carville predictions of how long we win or whatever. This will strengthen and embolden you conservatives. It'll embolden Donald Trump to move forward with his agenda because he can then explain to the American people just how crooked all these people are. Short break. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. The Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson. Here. I got to tell you, I'm so happy to be here with you because <laughs> I'm looking at this fight that the left picked with us, and I'm telling myself they just wouldn't leave us alone, and now they're in big trouble. The biggest trouble of politics since I've been alive, and probably since most of you've been alive, is happening right now for the left. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com, 844-551-8255 if you want to talk to us. Remember when Donald Trump got elected? Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, And he made the comment. Now, Donald Trump made a lot of promises. But the one promise that we wanted him to keep was we wanted Donald Trump to prosecute Hillary Clinton. And here's what happened at the time. If I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general, to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. Well, it looks like that plan is out the window. After vowing to pursue further investigations of Hillary Clinton's private email server and the Clinton Foundation, Trump's administration will drop the matter altogether. I think when the president-elect, who's also the head of your party now, Joe, tells you before he's even inaugurated he doesn't wish to pursue these charges, it sends a very strong message, tone and content to the members. The decision is a major break from one of Trump's biggest campaign promises, one that many of his backers strongly supported. All right, everybody, welcome back. So... That was Donald Trump. He'd won the election, a hard-fought battle. He said, okay, you know what? I said some things, you said some things, I did some things, you did some things. All gone. Let's let it lie. And that's what happened for a minute. Hillary Clinton came out at one point. She was complicit. She was like, you know, uh, we need to let uh, Donald Trump do what he does and let, you know, blah, blah, blah. And changed her mind at some point. But during her concession speech, she was conciliatory, wanted Trump to give President Trump a chance. And I think this is why Donald Trump decided, you know what, I'll show some mercy. I And, and I think he was right. I think he said half the country voted for her. They feel this way by being vindictive. 
it'll it'll you know let them buy into the the narrative that he's a petty guy, etc. So he did uh, as much as I hated it. I I got to tell you that was I was like, "Oh, you're not starting out on the right foot here, buddy." And I bet there were many of you that felt the same way. As much as I hated it, I understood it and said, "You know what? He's right." What he was saying is, "We have more important things to do. Let's start working on the economy." And and you know what what softened the blow? <laughs> What softened the blow was the dude comes out, president-elect, and immediately he saves Carrier. Then he starts working on on the business of the nation, and he starts working on the economy. He's got SoftBank that's investing. He's got Alibaba. He t- Ford is no longer moving the plant, and on and on. So it was like, okay, for right now, I'm going to let this one go. I know the Clintons are crooks, but it would it would take a lot of the resources away from the things that we need to be able to do. So maybe that was your rationale as well. I didn't like it. And I, I want to be up front. I was mad at him for that. I was like, Whoosh. so for people to go, Oh, Kevin, you're dying in wool. Don't No, I didn't like that. And you want to know why? And, and I'm glad to proud to tell you, I'm right about it. I know the left, they don't give up. Hillary Clinton was conciliatory. Cause she was, you know, she got her butt kicked. It's like, you know, breaking up with a girlfriend, you know, initially it's, oh, you know, it's just not working out. And everybody's like, okay, you're right. And and then suddenly she's keying your car and flattening your tires. And you're like, I thought we got this resolved. No. (laughs) So that's what happened. Hillary Clinton fakes like, yeah, I'm really, you know, we're going to get all. And then next thing you know, she's she's keying your car and breaking, smashing your windows. And pretending she's at home watching TV or something, probably watching Fatal Attraction. So I knew it would come back to bite him. But my thought process was if he does continues doing all these great things, the left is going to finally have to go, look, throw their hands up. and go, The dude is just too good. He's too good. Do you think that's ever going to happen? Have you seen enough of these folks to realize they never give up? They it. There will not be a time when in this in the next eight years that the media gives Donald Trump any real. They'll fake it. They'll pretend that oh, and things are looking. You know, they'll always balance. They'll give you a, a little bit of sugar and a lot of salt when they should be giving you a lot of sugar and a little bit of salt because that's the way I see it. I don't agree lockstep with Barack Obama. Never agree with that fool. But I don't agree lockstep with Trump. But when he does good, I'm going to I'm going to tell you. And right now I'm telling you, this dude is there's nothing to be for people to be complaining about except on a philosophical level. You know, just I don't, I've been told not to like illegal that I must like illegal immigration. So I'm going to be against Trump because there's no logical reason not to like the guy. So back to Hillary Clinton. So Donald Trump says, look. Let's let it go. Bygones be bygones. Move forward. And Hillary Clinton couldn't let it go. She just, she, she, and I tell people this all the time. The the elixir of that power, uh, just getting to that has to be so overwhelming that Hillary Clinton was willing to wit, willing to, I mean, think about her uh, foundation is under investigation because it's a fraud. It's a scam. All the different things that are going on. As I said, why wouldn't the Clintons say, you know what? We've gotten away with a lot. Let's leave things alone. They started the the Russia thing knowing where this would go. I got I'm trying to put you guys in the head of a of people that cannot let go of power. Ask yourself this. You know what you've done with the Russians. You've got $145 million in your bank account because of them. You've given speeches. You are so connected to the Kremlin, you might as well have an office in the building. And you are now pointing the finger at another guy who's got nothing to do with it, and he's now in a power position? What could you possibly be thinking? you got money in the bank. I would be living somewhere changing my name. (laughs) And the Clintons couldn't do it could not let go 
We'll be talking more about this when we come back. Keep it here, folks. This is the Kevin Jackson Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I also I thought we should give a chance. We had to give an open mind to uh, the new president, and I meant it. You know, I didn't want everybody who voted for me just immediately going into kind of a defensive crouch. Let's see, maybe there will be uh, a pivot, a move away from the horrible rhetoric, the divisive, insulting rhetoric that had fueled his campaign from the very first day. Maybe because he'd never run for anything, he kind of was either convinced himself or had been convinced that this was how to... uh, you know, consolidate his position in the Republican Party uh, and that there were enough people that would be attracted by his kind of uh, uh, nativist, uh, populist, nationalist, uh, scapegoat uh, rhetoric that, you know, maybe that's what he felt he had to do to win. So let's give the guy a chance. Well, that did not last long. And it didn't last long because clearly, as Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. I got to tell you, if you're like me, don't you just want to reach through the radio and just, you know, like if you could get to Hillary, just put your fingers around her neck and say, shut up. (laughs) My goodness, this is the Kevin Jackson Show. KJ Radio, 844-551-8255. Hillary Clinton had the nerve to talk about divisive rhetoric during the campaign. Trump had no divisive rhetoric. I know what you when I say something like Kevin, he did divide here. And there. I, I told you guys I was talking to a Senate candidate, and he's and he's telling me Kevin D- Donald Trump, you know he he is divisive. And I went, how so? How so? You know, well, you know he and I go the only if if you are calling me telling me that div- Donald Trump is divisive and you want my support, and you you can't have it. Donald Trump did nothing divisive. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Now, if you define divisive as him saying Barack Obama did nothing for this country, then you are on the other side. Donald Trump is factually correct. Barack Obama did nothing to help us. So what exactly do you want us to do To, to say something in order to placate the other side? That's what makes things divisive is when you lie. 
And I'm not lying about Trump, uh, Barack Obama. He's a, he was a fraud. He's a fool. And we should be embarrassed that he was ever the president of the United States. And if you have a problem saying that, then you must live around a lot of black folks <laughs> because there's no other reason. There's nothing more you can say. I don't, I don't dislike Barack Obama. I don't, for me to go, oh, he's a terrible. No, I, I mean, I don't think he'd be a, he's certainly not a guy I'd hang out with because he's a fake. He, I don't like fakes. But other than that, I don't care. I know a lot of fake people. I don't hang out with them, but I don't talk smack about them. I don't, there's nothing about, them, oh, I, you know, I'm jealous. Of, no, go be a fake. You're going to get found out. So I don't care. But what I do care about is being able to espouse my own views about somebody without people accusing me of being racist and all these other things. That's the division. And Hillary, Hillary Clinton says that it, it can, he wanted to consolidate his position in the Republican Party. That's the furthest thing that Donald Trump had on his mind. It's like I, I talked the other day about legacy. Somebody that comes into a position going, I'm worried about my legacy. Like when I started doing radio, I didn't go, I'm worried about my legacy. I wonder what my legacy in radio would be. I'll be honest with you, folks. I don't care what my legacy is in radio. And if I'm not doing radio next year, so be it. You know, a few of you will miss me. Some of you will go, well, there you go. Who cares? And good for good for both sides. I'm, but I will tell you this. I won't lose a minute sleep over it. Your legacy. Kevin, don't you want to be in a radio hall of fame? No. <laughs> What's it going to get me? How many kids get adopted if Kevin's in the radio hall of fame? How many lives are saved if Kevin makes it to the radio hall of fame? I mean, it's a dinner. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, is there a trophy? I, wh- what happens? I got hundreds of trophies. They're karate trophies, but I got hundreds of trophies. I got trophies from baseball from when I was a kid. I I got third place and second place, I don't know, three or four times in punt, pass, and kick. Let me ask you, what do those trophies mean? <laughs> I, mean I remember they used to be on my grandmother's mantle. <laughs> oh, man, I can't even find them. You know, the little dude. <laughs> and I hated I didn't get the gold. Oh, I hated it every year. I didn't put any effort in, but and I'd get second and third, but I hated I didn't get the gold. <laughs> Trophies and awards. I had a guy call me up, you know, he's a, uh, and I'm going to get back to all this stuff, but he's a uh, American progressive. And first thing this guy says, he's a brother. And he says to me, uh, Kevin, so you were selected as one of the top 50 most uh, influential blacks in politics by Newsmax. And he goes, are you aware of that? And I go, no. And he goes, oh, well, he goes, well, you are. And I went, well, okay, great. And he chuckles. And he's like, you know, and I go, what's funny? And he goes, well, I just figured, you know, I, I go, look, big deal. I go, you know, listen, let me tell you what happens. I said, so I go look at that and I'm number 37. And I see people below me and I go, wow, I thought that guy would be more influential. And I see people above me and I go, oh, well, that person's not more influential. And so it, instead of it breeding this idea, oh, look at me, I'm a, thank you for putting me up here and all that, you know, I become competitive. And instead of being proud of the accomplishments of the other 49 people, I'm either, you know, probably mostly jealous about what, look, I don't care about that. What do I care about that? It doesn't do... I mean, look, I get it. I get the people. Oh, Kevin, the people pay attention. I know you pay attention to me. I got, you know, over half a million people on Facebook to pay attention. I got a bunch of people on Twitter. I have people that write to me every day. Millions of people hear what I have to say weekly through some medium, some form of media. Great. And if it influences some people, phenomenal. I'm glad. I love Dan Bongino. Dan's a sharp guy. Uh, there are many people out there that I go, man, that, he's a good thinker. You know, we all know the names of Star Parker and Alan West and others. So I'm happy that these people are out there. But I'm not, I don't need a ranking. <laughs> you know, well, he's got more Twitter followers or he's got this or that. Let me tell you, if if that's your your measuring stick, congratulations. Let me tell you, th- these guys on in social media, they have, have curtailed me, Wayne Dupree, they don't let us grow. They don't want our wor- our words to get out there. And Hillary Clinton's talking about divisive rhetoric. Then she uses terms like nativist, populist from Donald Trump, nationalist, scapegoat rhetoric. Those were her exact words. Nativist, populist, nationalist, scapegoat rhetoric. 
what she's saying is that your love of America, you're a nativist, you're a popular. He's trying to play to America. What's, what these politicians don't get is that is exactly who we are. What do you mean he's trying to play to America? He's trying to play to the people that, that want to put America first. What kind of crazy populist divisive rhetoric is that? Uh, the kind that got him elected. That's what it is. And Donald Trump threw this olive branch to Hillary Clinton. He says, look, let bygones be bygones. And Hillary Clinton did it at first. And then she came out and she said, he's a nativist, a populist, a nationalist, scapegoat rhetoric. And then says, when people see who you are, they, you believe in the first time. Well, we know who she is. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Hillary Clinton totally denied this. She didn't know anything. She knew nothing. All of a sudden it found out. What I was amazed at, it's almost $6 million that they paid, and it's totally discredited. It's a total phony. I call it fake right. news. Uh, it's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I don't have to tell you who that was. That was the president commenting on Hillary Clinton's disgraceful look into this this dossier that that McCain ran over, was all too happy to run over to the opposition, to the DNC to say, look at this, look at this dossier I've got on Donald Trump. Yeah, we can help him to never be president. Hillary, I'm all in for you. A guy who wants to represent you. And then he says, oh, no, no, no. The reason why I voted against health care is it wasn't the right thing or whatever. After promising the people of Arizona, he would vote down Obamacare. A vindictive snake is what McCain is. You can call him a veteran. You can call him a war hero all you want. He's a vindictive snake. You can undo, you know, the old, the old saying, it takes a lot of attaboys to undo one all crap. Well, there's an all crap. So you can give him all the attaboys you want. You want to make John McCain your hero? Make him your hero. He's not a hero to me. And I respect veterans more than anybody. But I don't respect traitors. Traitors to conservatism. Traitors to this nation. You can sit in the Vietnam War camp. By the way, many other people did as well. That don't say a word about it. And you can do what you do. And I certainly appreciate that. You know, because he was at a time of war. But you come back here and act like a traitor and think that I'm going to, you know, continue to live on that muscle memory? No, not me. Disgraceful doesn't begin to describe what the left have done to torpedo this nation. On behalf of what? Themselves. The money. The power. It's ridiculous. It's a it's one guy. Disgr- well, here, play the clip. The real problem, the FBI has, whether it's Mueller or whoever, the FBI has its fingerprints all over this dossier. And, and uh, that creates a, a, a genuine conflict of interest if they're the ones that are doing the investigation right. into it. And A.B.'s right. There are so many questions. now. I mean, I've been I, I've been in favor of getting rid of this investigation for, for a long time because I, I feel like it's turned into a political circus. Welcome back, everybody. It's because the Mueller investigation is a political circus. We all know that now. Mueller goes back into this whole he was the person involved during this whole uranium thing I mean he's a, he's complicit there are calls for his resignation and he should resign he should recuse himself and quite frankly he may end up going to prison as well and there are people Kevin nobody's going to go to prison oh somebody's going to prison over this Somebody going to prison. You let me tell you something. We I know how we've watched all this stuff evolve when it was Barack Obama's time, the era of Obama and Ed Comey and, and Mueller and all these guys protecting them. They don't have that anymore. And and I'm telling you guys right now, Donald Trump realizes that far too many swamp creatures involve the Clintons and the existing government apparatus, and he would be if he is going to drain the swamp, if he's serious about this, this is the best time for him to do it. It is the best time for him to consolidate power, something that I don't believe 
He craves and that, you know, it's like the Lord of the Rings. Everybody who grabs that ring wants the power. This is the first time probably in a long time. I'm thinking Reagan days where the person getting the power is going, I don't want to wear the ring. If you remember the Lord of the Rings, if you put that ring on, it, it consumed you. It made you want to crave that power. And I, and I go back to what I said earlier in the broadcast. Look at Hillary Clinton and what she's willing to give up. This is a woman willing. She's on the heels of, I mean, she's sick. I don't know how sick she is. She's she almost, she'll, what, she's 68, 69 years old. Whatever she is, well, the next, if she were to live 10 more years, do you really want to live it with this? Or would you want to take your money and, and your power and go do something really good for people finally? What an opportunity. Do you think she wants to do that? No. She craves power to the point where she could end up ruining her reputation which is tough to do any worse than she's done, ruining the reputation of her family for posterity. I mean, think of the word Ponzi, right? The Ponzi scheme. The Clintons can become synonymous with scandal, tainting generations of people, including her exist her daughter, and which I think she's as complicit as anybody else, and and then hurting the party and all these I mean she cannot go away. The party is asking her to go away. And she cannot go away. Risking life and limb in this. <laughs> That's what a drug politics must be. John McCain's the same way. Dude is 80 years old, got brain cancer, and cannot go away. He does, it, it's, He's had skin cancer. Now he's got brain cancer. He's worth a fortune. He's got a wife 20 years younger than he is, and he won't go away. These guys got to die in office. It's, a, it's amazing. It, it's sad, to be honest with you. About a month ago, Hillary Clinton appeared on Colbert, late night Trump hate fest, and um, the comedic hack asked her, what should America do if the allegations of Russian collusion with the Trump campaign were proven true. And Hillary Clinton says this, if there's evidence of coordination, communication, whatever it might be, then I think millions of Americans are going to say those raise questions about legitimacy. Now, what do you do about those questions besides ask them? What you do is you mobilize politically to express your will, your rejection of that kind of Russian involvement and coordination at the ballot box. I mean, That is where we settle our political differences, and that's where it should be. Now, a month ago, this was just about a month ago, on Colbert, asked directly what she thinks, that was her answer. Now, what was funny about it is Hillary Clinton pretends on Colbert that the investigation into President Trump and his satellites is a very real thing. If there is evidence of coordination, communication, whatever it might be, then I think millions of Americans are going to raise questions about the legitimacy. So she didn't say, you know, look, um, first of all, it's got to be legit. It's got to be something that happens. We don't know anything about this. No, she's continuing to sell the narrative. and And Colbert's happy to let her do it. Right? So he's got her on there. She's not going to even allude to the idea that this is probably not even true. Then she gives a response on how things should be handled. Now, Colbert didn't bother to ask Clinton, what happens if these allegations point back to the Clintons and former President Obama? Now, see, that would have been a good question. You know, uh, Secretary of State Clinton, you know, what, what if things turn out not to be as they are? Then does that legitimize President Trump? She doesn't ask that. He wasn't. He won't even think about asking that. Anybody think that Colbert is going to have Hillary Clinton back on to grill her over the newest developments in Dossier Gate? Because if he does, he can begin with questions that come from an article that I read in the Hill. And here's what they said: Before the Obama administration approved a controversial deal in 2010 giving Moscow control of a large swath of American uranium, the FBI had gathered substantial evidence 
that Russian nuclear industry officials were engaged in bribery, kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering designed to grow Vladimir Putin's atomic energy business inside the United States. These are government documents and interviews, and the Hill, folks, this is a, a leftist rag, is, is one's pointing it out. This isn't Breitbart. They also obtained an eyewitness account backed by documents indicating that Russian nuclear officials had routed millions of dollars to the U.S. designed to benefit former President Bill Clinton's charitable foundation during the same time Secretary of State Hillary Clinton served on a government body that provided favorable decisions to Moscow, sources told The Hill. Now, I can hear Colbert asking Hillary the tough questions about this. So, Secretary of State, did you prefer the light blue outfit outfit or the pink outfit when you were at your last charity ball? (laughs) I just want to see this, folks, blow up in the face of the media. Colbert should have Hillary Clinton back on his show and say, "Mm, Secretary of State Clinton, last time we talked, I asked you a question about uh, what happens if this Russian thing blows up. You know, what should we do? And it turns out, well, the things are pointing back at you. What say you, Hillary Clinton? Do you think that hack will do it? You think any of these shows is going to have Hillary Clinton on and ask her to face the music about what's going on? She she was in uh, Britain, and we played the clip a couple days ago, uh, last week, and it was around uh, getting asked this question, and she says, oh, they're always after me and, and Barack Obama, and, you know, it, it's a whole bunch of nothing. You know, a barrel of nothing or whatever. No, she didn't say, who was it that said it was an empty barrel? <laughs> but it, it was nothing. Well, it is something, just like that Weinstein scandal. And the left are going to do exactly what Kevin they did with Jackson. Harvey Weinstein. On the Black Spears Radio the Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Now it's time for our Negro spiritual part of the program. We bring you Swing Low. (laughs) Welcome everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. And I'm about to regale you with a story of a young man, a black man, Let's just call him Little LeBron. <laughs> and he grew up tough. He's six foot eight, 260 pounds. He can jump 10 feet, 12 feet in the air, fly like Superman, or whatever else. I, I, I've got this story, and it just cracks me up. LeBron James, it, it, he should be ashamed of himself. But I don't blame him because I listen to the lack of, of – uh, of information the lack of explanation of things that are given to young black men and i and i say to myself i get it i understand why these kids are all jacked up lebron james uh whether it's lebron james or stephen curry who doesn't want to go to the white house because he says the president's oppressive but he would have gone with obama who by the way wrecked the black community but he'd happily go be seen with him there are pictures of people hanging out with Obama with that goofy smile and those big old ears that Obama had. And it's prominently displayed in their offices. It's in their homes. They want to say, I'm, I'm down with the president. They got his Twitter. They got his, uh, his email address. And they want people to know, 
And if if Barack Obama were a Republican, you would watch the walls come down. The I mean, can you imagine if Barack Obama were a Republican, if they put an R after his name, what would be going on right now? Number one, he wouldn't have ever been president, right? But what else? If Barack Obama were a white president, what would be going on? Would would Jay-Z and these guys have pictures and hanging out with him and all that? The answer is no. They'd be accusing this man of being the worst president for black folks in the history in history. And they would have been clamoring to get rid of him. Hillary Clinton would not have run and asked the white version of Barack Obama to help her get elected. That's how bad he was. But the left, they wonder how how they they wonder how Hillary lost when all they had going for them was the fact that Barack Obama was black. That's it. They didn't have a record. His record was dismal. If you looked at Barack Obama, there's I'm talking about on paper. There's no way as a Democrat you would have called him in to run with you. You to this right now, you can't even call Barack Obama in to fundraise. Nobody is donating to the DNC. They won't donate on behalf of Barack Obama. Individual candidates are struggling to get donations, and it's only going to get worse. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about racism in America, how bad it is. Because LeBron James has been referred to as a slave by Jesse Jackson. The NFL players have been referred to as Uh, Well, the owners have been referred to as having a plantation mentality, which implies that the black men who work for these billionaires, the multimillionaire black men that they hire are indeed slaves. And I have put in my application for slavery, just to be clear. But plantation slave LeBron James has another reason to hate America and to hate Donald Trump. I saw this story and I said to myself, oh, well, here we go. This is a perfect reason for LeBron James to be upset with the country that would dare elect a billionaire accomplished man versus a community organizer, black dude. The multimillionaire basketball star LeBron James has made somewhere mm, between 35 to 40 million dollars on a one million dollar investment. I know, I know, hard to believe in America they would treat him this way. This is a Fox Business report on stupid racist America. Now, let me read this to you. Sources told ESPN that James, his business partner, Maverick Carter. That's pretty interesting name, Maverick Carter and financial advisor, Paul Wachter of Main Street Advisors, invested less than one million dollars into Blaze Pizza, a fast, casual pizza chain in 2012. Remember the year, people, 2012. ESPN says the valuation was confirmed when Blaze Pizza sold an undisclosed percentage of the company to a private equity firm called Brentwood Associates, which valued the company at around $250 million. James and his partner own 10% of that or around 25 million. Now you're saying to yourself right now, Kevin, where did you get this 35 to 40 million? Hold your horses, white people. Hold your (laughs) horse. Hold your horses. (laughs) However, that amount doesn't include endorsement payments. James gets for exposing the company to his 91 million followers across Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter which bumps his stake to an estimated 35 to 40 million dollars this is according to ESPN so um according to Forbes the brawn has been key in terms of brand awareness which helped grow the company to where it is today lebron james idiot at that he is has 91 million people in social media who apparently give a crap about what he says. He's like Kim Kardashian. He says, do it. They do it. Bada bing, bada boom. I need to be putting a lot more money into social media. I'll put it that way. But anyway, so he's got 91 million people and that's what's grown the brand 
to a valuation of $250 million. Boy, they better hope LeBron doesn't get hit by a truck. You know what I'm saying? $250 million. So because of his little sweetheart deal on social media, the 10% that only is $25 million, and he's only a piece of that with two other white boy partners, Maverick Carter and Paul Wachter of Main Street Advisors. Those are his business partners. They've owned, they got 25 mil between them. Okay. So, but James, because he's the brand he's, he's worth, and this was an ESPN number somewhere between 35 to 40 million. I don't know what them white boys got, but there's no white privilege over there. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So LeBron James is doing pretty well in this investment. I can only imagine how bad LeBron feels learning that his investment in America has performed as it has. Imagine, now here's something to think about. Imagine how well this would have done if LeBron had been a white boy. Think about it. Think about it. (laughs) What do you think? You think it would, uh, being all, all kidding aside, you think LeBron, if he were white, would it have been more? If he's still LeBron James, would it have been more? Same situation. See, I'm with the, I don't think it would have made any impact. My producer says it would have been the same. I agree. Maybe, honestly, if we were going to err on the side of caution, if I were going to make a Vegas bet, gun to my head, I'd say black LeBron would get more coverage with his pizza joint than white LeBron. That's what I'm saying. If I had to make a bet, 5149 Black LeBron. That's just that's Kevin Jackson there. Now I told you guys about LeBron pulling the race card a while back when he was uh, getting traded. He wanted to leave the Cavs for the Miami Heat back in 2012 and LeBron claimed victimhood. <laughs> he got to ask about his popularity. They have what's called a Q score for for uh, athletes and entertainers and it had him dropping from one being one of the most popular sports figures to being only sixth from the bottom and he told CNN I think so at times it's always you know a race factor <laughs> now LeBron LeBron's leaving his team to go to another team and he's doing it pretty acrimoniously people are not happy in Cleveland of how he's wanting to do it. And he's wondering why his Q score dropped his fan, his big base of fans in Cleveland effectively said the heck with you, LeBron, but he couldn't handle it. So he blamed it on race. I mean, it just, I'm just telling you. And then Jesse Jackson had this to say when, during the time he says, no matter how much money you have, no matter how famous you are, no matter how many people admire you being black in America is tough. <laughs> I just, I got to chuckle at that. I, look, it, it, I don't think I ever want to try to be in the shoes of a LeBron James for even 15 seconds because I would hate my life. You know what I'm saying? I Sometimes you just need to ride out your own life because I know what LeBron's get, what this dude is doing. There is no reason for this guy to be complaining about anything except turning a million dollars into he won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome everybody, Kevin Jackson here. Kevin Jackson show kjradio.com I want to talk about a lady who sleeps with a python yeah did I get your attention well hopefully I did because yes there's a lady that sleeps with a python and leftists remind me of this lady who sleeps with a python this is her pet python yeah that's what the Obamas and the Clintons represent to the Democrats they're the pet python see the Democrats went out and they bought themselves this pet python years ago And they fed the snake rodents and the reptile he grew and he grew and such as the Clintons and the Obamas in stature. Both of these families have grown from humble beginnings. They've grown 
and neither in any way prepared to be president. But back to the snake analogy. So the Democrats fed the snake and the feedings continued. And I'm talking about for years, they take the little rodents and the rodents would get bigger and bigger. First, they had little mice. First, it was little, little bitty mice that weren't born. They just, you know, I don't know if you've ever fed snakes, but they, this is the little bitty ones, no fight. Then they got up to the mice that were alive because they're bigger. And I don't know if you've ever fed them, but I've watched a friend of mine and he kind of, you know, knocks the mouse out and gives them to him. And sometimes they give them to him frozen, not completely frozen, but thawed. They'll freeze them and thaw them out. The snakes would rather have them when they're warm, though, because then they can kind of lick the tongue out and find them. So they find, you know, they, they feed these snakes and then it gets bigger and bigger. They go from mice to rats, from rats to rabbits. So the, the animals get bigger as the snake gets bigger. So the snake grows more and more powerful. It's allowed to sleep with the Democrat at night because the Democrat's going, hey, as long as I feed the snake, the snake's good to go. So it feeds it, feeds it, feeds it bigger and bigger animals. But then one day, this snake that's sleeping with this Democrat quits eating. It's 15 foot. Snake weighs a couple hundred pounds. It's slithered up around its its warm body Democrat. And the Democrat brings in a rabbit and the snake goes, nah, just not hungry. I don't want anything. And this goes on for a couple days. Then it goes on for a week. Couple of weeks. The Democrat gets nervous and goes, whoa, what's going on with my snake? And finally says, I better take my snake in and have it looked at. It's quit eating. And so the, the lady, the Democrat, takes her snake in to the vet. And the vet says, well, hmm. <laughs> I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. He says, the good news is your snake's not sick. He says, but the bad news and probably more shocking to you is your snake quit eating because it was preparing to eat a very large meal. You. That's a true story, by the way. Lady had a pet python. Had it for a long time, fed it, snake quit eating. Snake got to be big. Every night she's cuddled up with this snake around her neck, around her back, and the snake stops eating. See, because snakes go, you can give me little bitty things and I got to eat all the time, or I can just have a big meal and not have to eat for a while. And the snake was preparing to eat her. The Democrat Party raised the python that slept with it. And the snake quit eating for a while (laughs) and decided, you know what, Democrats, I'm going to make a meal out of you. And that's exactly what we're witnessing today, folks. We're witnessing the Democrats (laughs) watching their snake turn on them. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, all the way down the food chain, you are about to watch the Democrats implode. Now, look, We've gone through this before. We've talked about this in the context of when's Obama going to be held accountable for the VA or for Fast and Furious or for Benghazi and Hillary Clinton with Benghazi and Susan Rice with Benghazi and we're whining and whining and whining. And you know what the smart conservatives have been doing? We've been going, hey man, truth will get out. It's just a matter of time. No, I get people to to this day, Kevin, nothing's going to happen to the Clintons. (laughs) Watch. Watch what happens to the Clintons. The Clintons are in big trouble. Barack Obama is in big trouble. James Comey is in big trouble. And when it's all said and done, I don't know if Mueller's going to end up in trouble because I don't know what he did with this Russia deal, but he's going to end up in his, his, there's going to be some issues for him. And then you're going to start looking at others in the Obama administration. Then you're going to start looking at the people who helped him to cover it up. You're going to look at the Debbie Wasserman Schultzes. You're going to look at the all of the DNC staffers. You're going to look at all of Obama's cabinet. You're going to look at the entire State Department, Jennifer Palmieri, Marie Scharf, and many others. 
Then you're going to start looking at Congress. This is not some small thing. This snake has been preparing for a meal. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to tell you. And the Democrats aren't going to be able to do anything about it. There is no vet for them. No warning sound is going to go off. That snake's going to wake up one day, choke them out, and start to swallow. And that day comes quickly. (laughs) I, I told you guys before, when they started dropping these emails and all these other things, how, do you think the Democrats were concerned? And of course they were. They went into crazy triage mode, doubled down on the Russia discussion, anything for subterfuge. And they tried it and it didn't work because Trump Trump got elected. And as I've said, that, that completely threw a wrinkle in everything. Donald Trump becoming president, do you understand how important that was now? Where would we be? Would we be looking... Where would the Russian investigation be going if Hillary Clinton could maneuver it and would have Loretta Lynch and people like her continuing to promote the lie and the media also willing to do it as well? We got a lot to talk about. I mean, I I thought today I'd be talking about NFL, World Series, you know, a host of other things because there's a lot. I mean, but and, and we can. I mean, my producers decide that's the route we want to go. But, you know, the point is we have so much to talk about with respect to the leftist scandals and the cover up. I find this intriguing. I don't know if you guys do. I love this. I love watching how they're going to try to get out of it. And there is no way out here. Back in a minute. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson here. We've got some great news. Kevin Sorbo's new film, Let There Be Light, was released over the weekend. Kevin's a friend of mine, played Hercules, 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 I get it. But uh, Kevin's an amazing guy, he really is, and had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with him on a fishing trip. He's working with us on Bleeding Blue, which is our film that'll be coming out soon, bleedingbluemovie.com. Kevin produces... Films now that he believes give people inspiration in God. And I got to tell you, 
I'm I'm a, a lifelong fan of Hercules and my friend Kevin Sorbo, and his film Let There Be Light opened over the weekend. We flocked to it in droves. You've got to see the film. And it did great. Great opening for a small independent film. Film was produced for less than $4 million. Sean Hannity funded this film, handed Kevin a check for $4 million bucks and says, go make it happen. And he did it. And he and his wife, Sam, have been hitting the rounds, making the circuits on the film. And they've got people, you know, uh, I mean, they've been doing a, a public, amazing publicity job on it. And they're saying that it'll now, I think it opened, it debuted in 350 theaters. And now they think it's going to get wider expansion. It was sold out. Practically any theater you went to, that film was sold out. <laughs> Love it. We hope the same thing happens for Bleeding Blue. Go to bleedingbluemovie.com. But it's not good news for Hollywood. We've been talking about the NFL and their ratings. We've been talking about the DNC and they can't raise any money. And guess what? Hollywood is suffering. Hard to believe that they're suffering. (laughs) Given all the great news that's been coming out of Hollywood, right? You know why the people in Hollywood haven't outed more people on this Weinstein stuff? Weinstein stuff? Because they know what would happen. If if you knew every producer and director who was out there doing the cast and couch, you know, man, tango. <laughs> you know, I was going to say mango. <laughs> the cast and couch tango. You would be appalled. But more than more importantly than that, because we haven't been going to the films as much. More importantly than that, the left would be so mad that they would stop. The reason why you're not seeing people come out and go, there was that other director, Spielberg, he did it, and so did George Lucas. He wouldn't let me play a (laughs) Wookiee unless I gave it up. (laughs) They're not going to tell on each other because they know it would crater the industry. And you know what these these people that make millions of dollars to play fake uh, fake people on TV would do in, in movies? They would have no jobs. They would have to go get regular jobs and you'd watch the salaries drop. That's what I'm hope I'm secretly hoping in the NFL is that suddenly these contracts, the NFL goes to these, these marquee players and say, Nope, you're not getting that kind of a contract anymore. The way we, we can impact both of these industries, by the way, it's all entertainment. So you can call it what you want, but we can impact the entertainment industry by not going. And that's what you're doing. They said that George Clooney and Kevin, I mean, uh, uh, George Clooney and Matt Damon's movie was a bust, a bomb. Here are some of the reviews. Oh, my gosh. This is so here's what uh, they said. Suburbicon is not shaping up to be the hit director George Clooney was hoping for. Critics are slamming the mystery thriller, which focuses on an idyllic suburban community rattled by a mafiesque invasion. Even the award-winning actors, Matt Damon and Julianne Moore, weren't enough to earn the film, rated R for violence, language, and some sexuality, praise from the critics. Here are a few. So The Atlantic, about 30 minutes into the movie, a depressing thought dawned on me. These storylines are never going to intersect, and indeed they don't. The result is a film that is both mundanely and inimitably bad. I would have said, about 30 minutes into the movie, it dawned on me. I can never get these 30 minutes back. (laughs) Here's Newsday. A misguided mix of nasty comedy and civil rights drama. A racially charged drama complete with flaming Confederate flags should not be squeezed into the next farcical film war with bloody slapstick and zany camera work. It just goes to show you. You can't let these guys, it's like kids, you, 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 it's like letting five-year-olds, ba- you know, babysit each other and you're going to run to the mall. <laughs> That's exactly what filmmaking has become these days. That was Newsday, folks. Here's Rolling Stone. This scattershot satire of the dark underbellies of the 1950s suburbia feels more like the movie the Coen brothers forgot to make. But the star staying behind the camera here lacks the instinct to go for the jugular the way the material demands. That was Rolling Stone. I could give you more, but I want to get to the numbers because this is what matters. Keep in mind, folks, Hollywood loves itself. They love certain people. So 
you would hope that Clooney would, that the critics would just say, oh, let's just leave him alone. You know, he's all right. Let's let's get people to go. They've got an investment here. Instead, apparently, people went to see Jigsaw dominating the domestic box office on the pre-Halloween weekend with about 20 million bucks, which isn't huge, by the way. Matt Damon's Suburbicon and Miles Teller's Thank You for Your Service are bombing. Jigsaw, the eighth installment of Lionsgate's Saw franchise, is performing in line with expectations, which range from 18 to 22 million. Get this. 2,941 locations this weekend. Contrast that with Kevin Sorbo, whose film opened at 350 theaters, standing room only. I had my friends were calling me, Kev, standing room only. We had to wait in line to get into Kevin's film. And here's what these guys, 2,900, almost 3,000 film locations for Jigsaw to generate 20 million bucks. And um, the Clooney film, 2,300, almost 2,400 uh, locations. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not, that's not true. It was a Medea Halloween was at 2,300 locations and Suburbicon was at 1,600 locations earned $180,000 at 16 lo- at a 1,614 locations and it earned less than a million overall. That was on Thursday night when it opened pre open as they call it. And in a million total, it's earned a million dollars. Now, this premiere, this film, Suburbicon, was at the Venice Film Festival. And Paramount acquired the U.S. distribution rights for $10 million and financed the film with a group called Black Bear Financing. It earned a 28% share on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes. That means it's a very, very bad film. And uh, it had a $25 million budget. Now, that's why I keep coming back to Kevin's film. Kevin Sorbo. Let There Be Light. $4 million, this film, to make it, to promote it, etc. Standing room only. And Hollywood thinks it's winning, folks. If anybody out there were to run a conservative uh, entertainment group, I think we could rock it. I really do, and I hope I'm part of it one of these days. Kevin, congratulations. Let there be light, folks. Go see this film. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money. He just now refers to it as the fake dossier, which is why I wanted to make the point that some of it has been corroborated, right. but far from all of it. Do you think more or most of it is true, or would we know that by now? Well, I, I, I don't know that. Uh, I, I, first, I, I do want to comment on the uh, pedigree of the financing, the audit trail there. Uh, when we did our intelligence community assessment, we were aware that the uh, there had been research done and that some Republican candidates, as a matter of fact, had contracted uh, through, I think, Fusion GPS to uh, obtain what it, the later became what's known as the dossier. So Clinton paid for part of it, but it had been started and, and paid for by off, Republicans. That okay. work was, as I understand it, was handed off later to the, uh, to the DNC and, and, uh, or the, camp, the Clinton campaign. So I think this is something that bears uh, an audit trail by uh, experts in... Uh, Finances that can track uh, uh, the, the auditing for this and to see uh, who, who is ultimately responsible for it. I think with respect to the dossier itself, the key thing is it doesn't matter who paid for it. It's what, what the dossier said and the extent to which it was, it's, uh, it's corroborated or not. We had some concerns about it from the standpoint of its sourcing, which we couldn't corroborate. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, some of the substantive, some of the substantive content, not all of it, but some of the substantive cont- content of the dossier, we were able to corroborate in our intelligence community assessment, which hmm. from other sources in which we had very high confidence. So level. when the president just refers to it as fake dossier, that is false. Uh, I, 
I don't think that's that, that is the accurate characterization for the entirety of the dossier. And I think that what has not been corroborated has yet to be determined. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. That was Clapper, James Clapper, intelligence guy uh, from way back. And he says uh, Republicans started this. And then the Democrats got it from the Republicans and, you know, took it. And he says, but I, so I'd like to see the audit trail of how that all came to be. Fine. I would love, I'd love to look at it. I bet you President Trump would say, let's look at it. Let's have it. Notice everything we have to get, we got to get through freedom of information. They don't want to give it. And he says, it doesn't matter who paid for it. He just, he says, it's just opposition research. Well, what does matter is the information. So here's what he says. We couldn't corroborate, corroborate everything. But we did corroborate some. So here's what I would say. I I love watching the Democrats squirm. See, they'll do anything to stop the bloodletting except to tell the truth. That's all they got. If the Democrats were to stop and go, look, okay, look, we're we're just going to quit. We really felt like there would be a connection between Trump and the, the Russians. We know we have one. We did, you know, and if I don't care how they want to spin the deal between Uranium One or whatever, but at least stop and say, we knew that we had ties to Russia, but we felt like ours were legit. You know, whatever. I don't care. It's funny when Manafort was being t- touted out there, you know, like used as bait. They did. It, I, and now that I look back on it, I'm looking at it and going, Manafort was going, guys, I worked for you at the time. How are you doing this? And then when he found out he was going to be the one held out to dry, I think that's when things started to happen. I mean, this it was a tortured attempt to explain away the fake dossier that led to the fake investigation of Donald Trump and his campaign. That's what Clapper's commentary was. She's, uh, Burnett says, he... He just now refers to it as the fake dossier, which is why I want to make the point. Some has been corroborated. Do you think some or most is true? And Clapper says, I don't know that. But he wanted to talk about the financing. But he goes on to say that he doesn't believe that. She says when the president refers to it as a fake dossier, that that's, you know, raises issues. Right. And he says, I don't think it's an act, uh, an accurate characterization for the entirety of of the dossier characterization of the, for the entirety of the dossier. So the dossier, just so we're clear, has fake information and it has real information. That's what Clapper wants to be clear. That's what uh, Burnett on CNN wants clear that there's some real information in this dossier. It's not fake, completely fake. It's like saying America is racist, right? Kevin? No, Well, Kevin, surely you can admit there's some racism in America, right? That's what she wants. That's what she wants a little bit. Just give me something to tell me that this dossier is not fake. It could be real, right? So if the dossier spelled Donald Trump's name correctly, then there is some reality to the document. Is there not? Yeah, I think you know where I'm going here, right? CNN said this. Oh, uh, this was a tapper and some other people. The long probe into Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential election took another turn this week when it was revealed that Hillary Clinton's campaign helped fund the creation of the controversial Trump dossier. They funded the creation. Other Republicans were looking for research. Clinton took it over and says, no, let's fund the creation of a dossier, a fake dossier. So, like with so much else attached or adjacent to the Russia investigation, they write, from President Donald Trump's campaign and its associates to Clinton and hers, separating the noise from the news can be an exhausting endeavor. This latest round of new details poses all the usual complications. So what happened and what matters? Partisans, especially Clinton and Trump loyalists, would give you two very different answers. But it boils down to the question of priorities. None of the major facts revealed this week are being disputed. The fight is over what's relevant to the bigger picture and whether anything has materially changed. (laughs) Uh, So the, the, the woman, there was a video that was played and she admitted that the information was not corroborated and that it never would be. But was more revealing to me 
was this part of the article. It said, so again, the new thing here is not that the Democrats paid Fusion GPS and so helped wittingly or unwittingly to bankroll Steele's work. He's the guy, the British guy of MI6 who was working with the Russians, but that it was specifically Clinton's campaign and the DNC. Now they write in brackets, your eye rolling friend would right about now pop up to ask, well, who else would it have been? It's a fair question. Note, opposition research, as dirty and secretive as it can be, is an everyday part of U.S. elections. Now, that's the end of the article, the piece that I found interesting and what I want to discuss. So when I got to that point, I said to myself, "Okay, well, if it's no big deal. That they were just gathering opposition research. Why did the Clinton team and the DNC not share this information earlier? Good question, right? The Clinton campaign and the DNC could have simply simply told reporters they'd entered into a deal with Fusion GPS months ago. It would have cut off any speculation that was out there and effectively forestalled this new drama, but they didn't say a word. And the result is the fact that the Clinton campaign funded this research could very well take the wind out of the sails of those outraged by Trump's emissaries potentially working with a foreign power. That's what CNN wrote. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't potentially take the air out of the sails. It takes the air out of the sails. There was no Trump working with a foreign power. The only people working with a foreign power was Hillary Clinton. But there are a lot of good questions that can be asked, folks. The best question might be, how the media refused to investigate the scandal that was right under their noses. And now we get to a litany of excuses. Some people on the left arguing that giving the country the Democrats deem our arch enemy 20% control of our uranium is a good thing. Hillary Clinton herself dismissed the discussion of the deal as a witch hunt. So we've got two already two excuses one it's a witch hunt now i'm not going to go back and connect all the dots for you but this guy that went on tucker carlson and actually hey well you know quite honestly it could be a good thing explain to me how that could be a good thing i'm talking about in the context of how the left have constantly droned on and reminded us of just how bad these russians are how bad putin is how connected Donald Trump is the Putin and they've gone on the witch hunt. Explain to me how you can now say that Putin's a good guy. See, the Democrats tell you what they're up to. I've told you guys this. They do it in your face. Dinesh D'Souza, a friend of mine, tweeted something along the lines of, you know, it's funny how the Democrats are doing everything with the Russians that they claim Donald Trump was. And I'm saying, how long have I been telling you guys this? I don't. My job is easy. I'm making it easy for you. It's very simple. Ask yourself with Trump, what would they say if Obama did it? Right? Ask yourself of a Democrat. Uh, all you, I mean, it's a very simple thing to flip the script and just say, hey, whatever they tell you that they've done, you can be guaranteed these that the Democrats are doing. And then watch it happen. Watch it turn out. Folks, that's the secret to the success of Kevin Jackson. Anyway, we got a lot more to talk about. You guys keep it here. Back in a bit. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com Oh 
putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Kevin Jackson. It's Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. We've been profiling these leftists. And by the way, the happiest guy in the world right now is Harvey Weinstein. And the reason is obvious. Hillary Clinton has finally completely taken him out of the, the, the limelight. This is a guy that for what a, a better part of a week, he's been just getting beat down and it isn't over for Harvey, by the way. And, and I still have am waiting. I know it's been another week since the Harvey thing get dropped out of the news cycle, but I want to know when are we going to have somebody else? Everybody's talking about this pedophile that, produces kid shows and pointing a finger at him. Okay, great. If he's one of the guys, then let's out him. But I want to out all these other people. We still haven't done anything to clean up Hollywood. Everybody talks about it, but nothing's happened. But Harvey is the happiest man in the world right now because he, he was a week in rehab, got out, supposedly went back in for a month. And let me tell you what rehab means for Harvey Weinstein for a month. It means media silence. No tweeting, no begging celebrities to talk to his board to get him reinstated, no talking to his brother, his family, and people like that, complete media silence in hopes that all of this can go away and he can resume his life in a normal mode. Good luck with that. In the old days, he may have gotten away with it. He's not going to get away with it now because we, we're going to remember this for quite some time. Why? Because it's intermingled with the politics of leftism. Democrats, progressives, they'd like us to forget it. They want us to forget the type of people that Hollywood and every other leftist industry creates. We talked about uh, George Clooney's wife and she used to, oh, we've got these uh, lawyers that help us with our human rights thing. And they're just a bunch of lecherous people. Really? I'm shocked. The wackademia, you know, the, all the wackademics are, well, you know, I was molested and, and people tried to chase me around my desk. Elizabeth Warren and people, you know, all these, every industry that leftists own, you will find the worst form of mankind, particularly mankind. And for the record, the worst females, the worst women on the earth, on the face of the earth, I don't care where they live, where they exist, nationality, creed, race, religion, sex, well, women, <laughs> finger quotes. They're the worst people, the worst women on earth are leftist, progressive, Democrat, call them whatever you want. They're swamp rats. They can get mad. The best women on earth, conservative women, not even a contest. You can't even, don't even, don't even go there, Okay. Because then you get me mad. Best representative of man on earth, conservative men. By the way, both flawed. Both flawed. Unworthy of the grace of God. But working towards it. Had a, a lady, she wrote to me, she says, Kevin, I love your show. She says, you know, one of the, one of the things I really like about it, you talk about Christianity, but you remind people that we're flawed, that we're not perfect. And I go, Good. If that's what you get out of it, that's good. Because let me tell you something. I am a failed, flawed Christian, but God knows I absolutely follow him. In all my failures and my failures bring me closer to him. I used to not think that way. I used to think as I failed God, I, I had to distance myself. God, I'm, I'm, this is terrible. I'm, I'm a hor horrible person. And he's going, no, 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 you're not. That mistake you made should draw you to me because you understand all the aspects of it. And it's a fact that it does that to me. It's a shame it's taken so long. <laughs> God's going, dude. <laughs> oh, man. The Lord works on you in, in, in mysterious ways. And that's a good thing. And that's why I tell people I never get involved with people's walk with God. You know, you can fail. And as long as it is, I mean, quite frankly, God will forgive you for anything. I just don't forgive people for things like pedophilia and stuff like that. It's just not going to happen. Sorry, I'm not perfect. But then again, I'm not God. But if you're you drink or, you know, you've had an affair, whatever. Look, I, I get it. That's, that's part of the human condition. We're all frail in that respect. But think about what your mindset was when you made that mistake. You want it. You were like, oh, God, it's horrible. You feel bad. 
and you want to run away from that thing that can bring you, you know, bring you salvation, make you feel like, you know what? I don't want that feeling again. I hate that feeling. And that's what God is telling you. No, get closer to me. Don't run away. But see, leftists run away. They rationalize. They'll give you 50 excuses. You know, they, and then they'll go to rehab and go, I'm all cured. They're not cured. They never, you cannot be a leftist and cure yourself. That's why I tell you, when the leftists tell me I'm a Christian, Democrats can be church going. Yeah, you, you can be. You know, the old saying, you just because you, you, you find yourself in a garage, it doesn't make you a car. Just because you go to church, it doesn't make you a Christian. So the idea that these people are improving their lives in some way because they go to rehab or diversity training or what, don't believe them. Hollywood doesn't want to fix itself. If it did, you'd know of the five or six other producers and we would be talking about that in conjunction with Uranium One, in conjunction with GPS. But let me tell you what's happening right now politically. Politically, we're learning, we're finding out that Hillary Clinton is the Harvey Weinstein of politics. She paid for the dossier. She wanted the, quote, opposition research on Trump, but it went beyond opposition research. It went from opposition research to trying to influence the election with bogus information. Hillary Clinton knows that's what happened. And so when that occurred, it had had a whole new dynamic. Who was it that did a clip on that? Well, there's considerable exposure. You know, the interesting thing about the original Russian collusion argument is that colluding with Russians is not a crime under the right. criminal code. There's no such crime. There's conspiracy. But the question is conspiracy to do what? The case, I, I've been saying this, many people have been saying this, for actual crime is actually getting weaker by the day. There's really not much evidence to suggest an actual federal crime. You know, you compare it to this, there is a basis for a criminal charge if these allegations pr- are proven. Now, you have the Uranium One deal, which right. is a pay-for-play allegation. That's a serious crime. The Clintons could very well show that there was no relationship between the half a million dollars that went to Bill Clinton and what the Senate, what the, the State Department did. But that is a classic criminal allegation if it were to be proven. With regard to the Fusion GPS and the dossier, um, there are issues there, particularly if people lie to investigators. Uh, either congressional or federal, that's the type of crime that gets charged in D.C. It's not... So the very specific... I think what you're referring to is what apparently happened last month before right. the Senate uh, committee investigating this, where John Podesta, the former chairman of Hillary's campaign, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the former head of the Democratic Party, were asked directly, did you pay for this? Did you... Did money from your coffers wind up at Fusion GPS? And both said no. That's right. And one of the people in the most precarious position is this attorney, Mark Elias, who... Right. Uh, who um, was the general counsel of the campaign. The New York Times reporters, two of them, have accused him of expressly saying there was no relationship at all with the Clinton campaign or the DNC and the dossier. He was also sitting next to John Podesta with congressional investigators when Podesta made the same denial. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. So I go back to what I said. Hillary Clinton is the Harvey Weinstein of the political movement right now the the leftist movement we've now outed her but the difference between what's going on in hollywood and what's going on right now with the clintons is we know who the other participants are we know who the other lecherous leftists are we know it's james comey we know it's Mueller. we know it's loretta lynch we know it's bill clinton We know it's Barack Obama and others, Podesta, his brother, many others, and they will see the light of day. Now, are they willingly giving this up? No, they're scrambling. I so would love to be able to to tell you guys, I've got undercover video of the opera, what's going on with the Democrats. I I laughingly said earlier in the broadcast that these people are packing up bug out bags and looking for places to change their identity. They are running, folks. You've got the Democrats on the run. When the hunters become the hunted, that's what I'd like to call this. Because that's exactly what's been going on. 
These folks have been hunting us. They find out some little peccadillo about you and they go, boom, here it is. He's not a Christian. Look at him. It reminds me of that toe tapper dude, you know, who was didn't want to admit he was gay, Republican, and then he resigned. He should have just said he was gay. Look, I get it. It's embarrassing. This goes before it doesn't go before God. <laughs> but if you're gay, man, just say it. Get over it. America, you know, look, we've forgiven a lot more. He won't stop Gotta until he's there. the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.